ho guardato un film o guardavo un film? Hmm. Are you confused when you have to use imperfetto and passato prossimo? Don't worry, these two verb tenses can cause a lot of confusion and that's why I'm here. I am here to give you a very clear, straightforward video of when to use one and when to use the other. Hang in there, give me a thumbs up and follow along. Hi, so today we are going to be looking at the difference between imperfetto and passato prossimo because honestly the big difference is not how to conjugate those two verb tenses of the past but when to use one and when to use the other. So with this video lesson I'm going to be showing you the main rules of when to use one and the other and hopefully at the end of this you will have a clear understanding of both verb tenses and you will never make a mistake again. As always, you can download the full lesson in PDF format by clicking on the link below this video. If you subscribe to my newsletter, you receive automatically for free all of these materials um, every time I make them. So if you're interested in that, go to italianlanguagehub.com and subscribe immediately. Okay, so both imperfetto and passato prossimo are two verbs that are used to talk about the past. The main difference, if you can't be bothered to learn all of the other ones, but if you want to learn one thing, is that passato prossimo, the action of passato prossimo, is an action that finishes. It starts and it ends, and it only happens once. With imperfetto, on the other hand, you're still talking about an action of the past, but it's an action that happened in an indefinite past, a past that we are not too sure about, and it's an action that is a habitual action, something that gets repeated over and over in time, and we do not know when the action starts and ends. Now, let's look at the different rules of passato prossimo and imperfetto. If you're looking also to learn how to conjugate the two verb tenses, I do have separate videos on that. I will link them below for you. Passato prossimo is used to talk about actions that actually have a time reference. The action that you're describing um, is happening in a specific time. It finishes and you know when it begins and when it ends. For example, ieri ho guardato un film in televisione. This sentence means yesterday I watched a movie on TV. Now let's analyze this sentence. You do have a time reference because you're talking about yesterday, ieri. So you fixed a time reference in the past. The action is not a repeated action. You watched the movie once, not a two or three times. It's implied that you finished watching that movie yesterday night, okay? So you watched it once and the action began and finished in the past. There are some typical expressions of time that will create this time reference of the past. For example, if you see or read ieri, ieri sera, l'altro ieri, l'anno scorso, il mese scorso, la settimana scorsa, Due anni fa, un mese fa, trent'anni fa. Okay, so when you're thinking about passato prossimo, think of a finished action that doesn't repeat. You know the time reference and it begins and it ends. Now, with imperfetto, you can focus on, let's say, three main areas. If you want more details of this, check the video specific to imperfetto but I'm giving you three big areas so that you can concentrate and you can see the difference between passato prossimo e imperfetto. You're going to be using imperfetto when you're talking about ongoing actions. So actions that are a habit, actions that repeat themselves in the past. The time reference is indefinite. In other words, you are describing a period of time that went on for a little while in the past. You will use it when you are talking about when you were young or if you are just simply mentioning 
um, an earlier period of your life. For example, quando frequentavo l'università, studiavo molto. In this case, I'm mentioning an earlier period of my life. I'm talking about when I studied at university. Quando ero piccola, andavo spesso a Milano Marittima. Meaning, when I was young, I often went to Milano Marittima. So I'm describing to you a situation of something that happened when I was young. So in an earlier moment of my life. You will use imperfetto when you are comparing what you used to do and what you no longer do. So um, typically you will use it when you are translating used to. So you're talking about how life was before and how life is now. For example, prima andavo spesso in palestra. Adesso preferisco correre nel parco. In this case I'm telling you what I used to like to do and what I do now. Anni fa i bambini giocavano per strada. Adesso giocano tanto coi videogiochi. Once again, I'm telling you what the children used to do before and what they do now. Imperfetto is also used when you're describing people, objects, places and situations in the past. Mia nonna Maria andava sempre a scuola a piedi. I'm telling you what my grandma used to do when she was little. So obviously I'm describing a situation of the past. Quando vivevo in città ero molto stressata. Once again, I'm giving you a description of how I felt when I was living in the city. And this also gives you an idea that I am no longer living in the city. So it's also a change of situation. Just like with passato prossimo, there are some uh, time expressions that help you with understanding that it's a time to use imperfetto. These time expressions are those expressions that give you a sense of things that are repeating. So actions that are repeating or that have become a habit. Here are a few of them that you can remember and use. Ogni mattina. Ogni sera. Ogni giorno, tutti i giorni, tutti i mesi, tutti gli anni. Di solito, solitamente, regolarmente, sempre. Quando avevo, you insert here the number, anni, quando avevo due anni. So you change the number, but you can use this structure when I was two years old, quando avevo due anni. These two verb tenses, passato prossimo and imperfetto, can also be used together inside of the same sentence. And you usually use them when you're talking about an ongoing action that will be interrupted by another action. Let me give you an example. Quando ero a Milano, ho incontrato Paolo. The first action is quando ero a Milano, when I was in Milan. What happened? Ho incontrato Paolo, I met Paolo. The first part with the imperfetto is an indefinite moment. So it's not an action that is finished. It's sort of there in an indefinite moment of the past. The second one is the one that interrupts that action. Ho incontrato. You will use passato prossimo because in this case the action begins and ends. It's not a repeated action. Okay, I know I gave you a lot of information, so I wanted to give you a quick chart where you can compare the two and review the two in a clear, easy way. You can download the chart in the PDF by clicking the link below the video. It's completely free, okay? Here is a chart. Let's look at it together. Passato prossimo. You are going to be talking about a definite action. Mario ha finito di studiare nel 1987. If you wanted to use imperfetto, you would have an indefinite action. And you could say something like Mario studiava in università. 
with passato prossimo you have a one time action ieri ho lavorato tutta la sera with imperfetto you have a repeated a habitual action ieri sera lavoravo with passato prossimo you will have a list of actions ieri sono andata al supermercato poi ho fatto una nuotata in piscina e infine sono uscita a cena con Lucia. With imperfetto, you are describing things. Il supermercato era piccolo, era pieno di gente in coda per pagare e la cassiera era molto arrabbiata. Ok. I hope this chart helped you to clear up all the different information that I gave you. Remember to download it by clicking on the link below. Uh, there is a wonderful book that I can suggest if you need to review those two verb tenses and compare the two. It's by Alma Edizioni and it gives the rules of both passato prossimo and imperfetto and also a lot of exercises. This is what the book looks like and below and also on my blog page you have the link to buy it directly from Amazon. It's an affiliation link. Okay, this is it for today. I hope this uh, lesson helped you. Let me know what you think and I will see you next time. Un bacio, ciao!